this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Raynella Dossett Leith? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. Raynella Dossett Leith was born in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee on October 25, 1948. She graduated from high school in 1966 and studied to be a nurse at East Tennessee State University. It was there she met a man named Ed Dossett, who was studying law. The couple married in 1970 and moved to Ed's 165-acre family farm in Solway, Tennessee. This is about a half hour west of Knoxville. Raynella worked as the director of nursing for a medical center, and Ed was elected as the district attorney for Knox County. In October 1991, when Ed was 43 years old, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He died on July 9, 1992. His cause of death was believed to be from a word that began with the letter C, but it was not cancer, rather cattle. His body was found in a field surrounded by cows, the authorities believed that he had been trampled by them. There was a hoof print on his overalls, and he had several broken bones. As usual, when the cows were questioned, there was a lot of mooing, but not a lot of answers. Raynella gave the authorities three different versions of what happened, but all those versions featured homicidal cows. Strangely, Raynella claimed that she became so angry after discovering Ed's body, she shot the cow that she thought was primarily responsible. She claimed the cow was wounded, not killed, but the police could not find injuries on any of the cows. The police determined that Ed's death was an agricultural accident, despite the fact that there was a double indemnity clause on his insurance, where accidental death paid twice as much. Six months later, on January 9, 1993, Raynella married Ed's best friend, a retired barber named David Leith. In 1995, Raynella learned that her first husband, Ed Dossett, had an affair with a woman named Kay Walker and had a child with her. Kay was in the middle of a divorce from a man named Steve Walker. Raynella allegedly lured Steve Walker to her farm and shot at him with a revolver. According to Steve, he ran away and she chased him using a vehicle. She caught up with him and pulled the trigger, but she had run out of ammunition. Steve escaped and notified the authorities. Raynella was arrested and charged with attempted murder. The motive for the alleged murder attempt was that Raynella wanted to raise Ed's child as her own. So I guess she was planning on killing Kay after she killed Steve. Raynella pleaded guilty to assault and was sentenced to six years of probation. When she completed the probation, her record was expunged. In 2000, David started receiving treatment for depression and signs of dementia his behavior became increasingly abnormal. Raynella described her husband's behavior in early 2003 as erratic. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On the morning of March 13, 2003, Raynella called 911 and claimed that her husband, David Leith, shot himself. When the police arrived at 11.32 a.m., they found her 57-year-old husband dead. His body was lying in his bed. He had been shot once in the forehead, right above his left eye. A 38 caliber Colt revolver was next to him. The weapon had been discharged three times, with only the one round striking David. Raynella told the police that she watched television with David in the morning. She left his breakfast on the nightstand, and then she departed the residence to visit her mother-in-law in the hospital. This was at around 9.30 a.m. She returned just after 11 a.m., which is when she found her husband dead. The police did not believe that David brought an end to his own life. They thought that Raynella murdered him with the revolver. In 2006, the police investigated the death of Raynella's first husband, Ed Dossett. Again, this is the individual who was supposedly crushed by cows. They found that the cows who had allegedly trampled him were not guilty. Ed actually died from a morphine overdose and everyone knows that cows typically refrain from using narcotics to commit murder. In 2008, 
Rainella was arrested and charged in connection with David's death. The plan was to try her for David's homicide, then for the homicide of her first husband, Ed. In 2009, six years after David died, Rainella went on trial for his murder. The jury could not reach a unanimous decision, and a mistrial was declared. Eleven jurors voted guilty, and one voted not guilty. Rainella was tried again in 2010. This time, she was convicted of first-degree murder. She was sentenced to 51 years to life in prison, eligible for parole in January of 2070. The state decided not to prosecute Rainella in connection with the death of her first husband, Ed Dossett. Rainella served six years in prison before her conviction was overturned. The judge at her second trial was removed because of a dependency on substances, which gives new meaning to the phrase high court. Rainella was tried for a third time in May of 2017. Before the jury started deliberating, the judge granted a defense motion for acquittal. The judge said that the state failed to meet their burden. Rainella was declared not guilty. In theory, Rainella could still be charged in connection with her first husband's death. However, this appears to be unlikely at this point. Now moving to my analysis. Rainella was acquitted by the judge, but did she actually kill David Leith? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that she was guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. Years before David's death, Rainella pleaded guilty to shooting at a man. Again, his name was Steve Walker. Her first husband, Ed Dossett, died under suspicious circumstances, namely a morphine overdose. The revolver that was used to kill David was a 38 caliber Colt. With Colt revolvers, each time the trigger is pulled, the cylinder rotates clockwise. This rotation aligns the next chamber with the barrel. Three cartridges were fired from the Colt revolver. Two of those cartridges were manufactured by Remington. The third was manufactured by Winchester. So there was a mixture of ammunition loaded into the chambers in the cylinder, both Remington and Winchester cartridges. The Winchester cartridge was under the hammer when the revolver was found, and the Remington cartridges were in the chambers to the right of the Winchester cartridge, which means that the two Remington cartridges had been discharged first. Fragments from the Remington bullets were found in the wall and in David's head. Fragments from the Winchester bullet struck the mattress and were found in the floor. One of the Remington cartridges caused David's death. He was killed when the gun was discharged either the first or the second time, and his death was instant because his brainstem was severed. This makes it look like somebody else discharged the Winchester cartridge, and that person, of course, could have also discharged the two Remington cartridges. It would make sense that the same person discharged all three. This doesn't mean that Rainella was the killer, but it does mean that it's likely that someone other than David was responsible for his death. Continuing with the inculpatory factors, blood spatter on the wall behind the headboard indicated that David's head was about a foot above the mattress when he was shot. There was no sign of forced entry in the house. David did not have any known enemies. The dryer was running when the police first entered the house. Perhaps someone had just washed clothing to get rid of gunshot residue. Rainella placed a phone call to David's daughter from a prior relationship. Her name was Cindy Wilkerson. The phone call was placed from the medical center at 9.50 a.m. She asked Cindy if she had seen David. Rainella said that David had not eaten his breakfast. This call was out of the ordinary and was placed only 20 minutes after Rainella left the house. Why would Rainella wonder if someone had seen David that quickly after she had seen him? And how would she know that he didn't eat his breakfast? Now moving to the exculpatory factors. There were no witnesses to the shooting, no video. An unknown assailant could have killed David. No gunshot residue was found on Rainella's clothing. No physical evidence connected her to the gun, like fingerprints or DNA. The state could not prove the time of death. In theory, David could have manipulated the cylinder of the revolver manually. He could have discharged the Winchester cartridge, then rotated the cylinder with his fingers and discharged the two Remington cartridges. This isn't really likely. People don't usually handle a revolver in that way, but technically it's possible. When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Rainella was guilty? Yes, I think she was guilty in reality, 
but I do not think she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There is no way to know that she was the one who actually pulled the trigger. She does not appear to be a master criminal. One would think that there would be more evidence connecting her to that weapon. If the state could have established that she was in the house when the shooting occurred, I would believe that she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But technically, Raynella did have an alibi. People saw her at the hospital, and of course she made that call from the hospital. Really, that phone call could be considered inculpatory in some ways, but exculpatory in other ways. Moving to the next section, here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. David Leith's behavior was becoming difficult to manage for Raynella, and she was running out of patience. She knew that he had a pistol. She retrieved it and walked up to him as he was lying in bed. She pointed the pistol at him and pulled the trigger, but somehow missed. Now she was in a bit of a situation, as David would have noticed being shot at and probably not been delighted about the implications of that event. It's one of those moments that would probably come up in a later argument between the couple. It wasn't like Raynella could just say, whoops, and walk away pretending that nothing happened, or make it seem like she was trying to do something else, like she was trying to hand him the gun and something went terribly wrong. Raynella fired a second round, which struck David and killed him. What doesn't make sense is why Raynella fired the third round. If she had stopped at the second round, it would have looked like David simply missed with the first shot, so he fired again. The state believed that Raynella fired the third round in order to get gunshot residue on David. This is possible. She could have made this argument that he fired twice and then fired the lethal shot. She probably didn't understand how the cartridges sat in the different chambers in the cylinder and how the cylinder rotated clockwise. However, I think that Raynella fired it immediately after the second round because she was panicked after missing the first shot. Like she didn't realize that she killed David until after firing a third time. She just pulled the trigger again. At this point, Raynella removed her clothing and washed them, or took them with her and disposed of them somewhere. Raynella tried to construct an alibi. She left the house quickly and called David's daughter from the medical center, simply to establish that she was not home with him. She returned home to discover David and pretended to be distraught. Item number two, as far as the murder of Raynella's first husband, I think it's possible that Ed Dossett brought an end to his own life. After all, he was suffering quite a bit with a terminal illness. Raynella may have been responsible, but there's really no way to prove that. The only motive anyone is aware of is the double indemnity situation with the insurance. Now moving to the final item, number three. Raynella was extremely fortunate at every step of the process. During her first trial, one juror insisted that she was not guilty, that resulted in a mistrial. She would have been in prison for life if not for a judge who was using drugs during her second trial. And I believe it's likely she would have been convicted at her third trial if not for the judge granting a motion for acquittal. During an interview, three of the jurors said they would have voted guilty, although it's not clear how the other jurors would have voted. Raynella Leith has had an incredibly low probability pathway to freedom and appears to have beaten the system at every stage against all odds. Those are my thoughts in the case of Raynella Dossett Leith. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as a homicidal cow conspiracy. Thanks for watching.